What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, we are going to be discussing use state when using React and TypeScript. First, we are going to discuss what is a typed use state. Then I'm going to show some examples of how you can use a typed use state in your React applications. Finally, I'm going to build an application that shows how to handle inputs when saved to a typed use state. First of all, what is use state? UState is a React hook that helps us manage information. It's kind of like a variable. We see UState when we handle inputs, when we want to save information to a state, such as a user state, or just when we want to keep track of things, like a counter, for example. So what is a typed UState? When we initialize UState, we can tell TypeScript exactly what type of data we are expecting to have in our state. For some types of data, we don't have to explicitly define the actual type. For example, Take a look at use state Cooper codes. Well, Cooper codes here is a string, and so TypeScript will automatically type our state as a string. This is called an inference. TypeScript is inferring that the type we put in is a string, which it is. So if we ever try to change our state to another string, for example, the state will have no errors because we are replacing a string with another string. But let's say we wanted to define a use state with a user type instead of a string type. We can define an interface to be our type in TypeScript like this. So our user type has two different properties, a name, which is a string, and a description, which is a string. So maybe something describing the user. We can then initialize a use state with something called a generic. So this generic here with user type means that this use state always has to match to the type of user type. And so when we initialize the use state, we have to pass in an object which matches user type. So we can pass in an object that has a name and a description set to strings, which is exactly what the type wants. We now have a typed use state. So if we ever change the value, we need to ensure that we always set the state equal to an object with a name and description property. Let's build a quick React TypeScript application to see this in action. I'm going to get started by going to an empty folder in Visual Studio Code and using the npx create-react-app, then the name of your app, which I'm just going to call my app, and then using the TypeScript template to create our React application with TypeScript. All right, so that might take a second. Now we can go into the CD My App to go into our application, and you'll see we have our full React TypeScript application all built out. Something I'm going to do just to make our app look nicer is I'm going to go into our app.css, and I'm going to apply some CSS to the body here. You don't have to do this, but this is some very basic styling to make it kind of dark mode. But now we can get to the fun part. Let's go over to app.tsx, and we can delete all this different boilerplate here, and we can get started with creating our actual application. So the idea of our application is that we are going to have a username input and a password input that we are going to save to a use state. So before we mess with use state, let's set up some basic HTML. I'm going to create a div in the return statement here, and I'm going to make an h3, which is just going to say username. Then I'm going to make an input where the type is going to be equal to text. So a regular HTML text input, and that's all for there. Then you guys can copy this over and create another input for the password. So if we npm start our application here, so as you guys will see, we have a very basic username and password where we have two different inputs. Now we need a state to save the value of these inputs. We can get started by creating the type we need for our state. For example, I'm going to create an interface and I'm going to call it the user input type. And it's going to have a username, which is a string, and then a password, which is a string. Now that we actually have our type, we can now make our typed use state. So we can start by going to the top and importing use state from React, then calling the use state hook like this. Then we can add in our type in front of the use state here. So we can say with some brackets like this, what type we want our use state to be. Well, we want it to be the user input type. Now the value of our state is going to be expecting a user input type. And so if you try and put in an empty object, look at what's going to happen. It's going to say, hey, we need user input type or else is what it's pretty much telling you. And so what we can do is we can make this initial state equal to a user input type with pretty much empty values. One thing I like to do is I like to say const initial state and then set it equal to pretty much the state we want to set it to initially. So username is gonna be an empty string and then password is gonna be equal to an empty string. So we can copy this to line 12, bring it over to our state and now it's happy. To explain again why we don't have any errors now is because this initial state matches the pattern of the user input type over here. Initial state has a username and a password, and the user input type has a username and a password, and they're both strings. If you were to make one of these a 
integer, for example, set equal to 10, look at what happens. It's going to say username of number and password of string is not the same thing as what it's expecting, which is username of string and password of string. So we have to make sure this is an empty string. All right, so we can get the getters and the setters of our state by saying const, the actual value of our state is going to be user input and then set user input. So now we fully initialize a typed state. Now we can implement functionality to change our state when the user inputs text. So on change of the username, for example, is the first one we'll do, set the username property equal to the input value. We can do that by initially going to the on change of the input down here, setting it equal to some braces. Then we can get the event from the change and we can pass it in to a call of a function that we're going to make such as set username. So we can define a function up here, for example, function set username. It's going to take in an event like this. And some really cool advice for you guys is when you're handling events from text inputs and things like this, it's going to want to have your event be a certain type. It says E has an any type. And so when you're handling HTML events or pretty much any events for that matter, it's going to want this event to be a type. A cool trick for you guys if you're using Visual Studio Code is you can hover over the event from the on change. It's going to show you what this event is. So we can see that this is a change event from React. This means we can go to the top and import change event from the React package up here. And then we can type this E to the change event. And what did it say specifically? It said specifically to the HTML input element. So we can copy this and bring it in over here. And so that's a cool trick to understand if you guys are working with different type of on change events is you can always just see what is the actual event from this input and get it right here, which is pretty cool. And so now we can actually set the user input, which is manipulating our state. We're gonna set it equal to a new object. This object is going to get all the different properties already in user input. So initially it's going to get an empty username and an empty password. In addition to those, we want to overwrite the username specifically for this input. And we want to set it equal to the e.target.value. This is going to allow us to set the username equal to whatever the new text value is. Something really cool that I didn't mention there is look at when we press e, we'll say e dot. We will see all these different things related to the event. This is because it is typed as a change event. Don't do this guys, but just to show for example, if we were to type this as any, look at what would happen. We will say e dot and it's not going to show us anything because it doesn't know anything about e in this context. But if we go back to the change event, our event here, e dot is going to have all the different information related to what it expects from a change event, which is a super great thing about TypeScript. And so now we can go to our application and I'm going to just console.log the user input every single time we see it. And we should see an object where the username is changing to whatever the person types in. So let's go check that out. So you'll see our state is initially, username is an empty string and password is an empty string. If we type in here, we'll see that our state is going to be equal to whatever we type. But you also see if we type anything inside of our password, nothing is changing. So let's go add that functionality on top. So we can pretty much copy the function for set username and just change it to set password because we're both managing text inputs down here. So it's going to be like almost the same code, except we want to set the password property equal to the e.target.value. And then whenever the password input changes, we want to run that on change here. And so we can grab the on change here and bring it over to our password input. But instead of saying set username, we want to make sure to say set password. So let's go check out if this works. Okay, so we can see that when we type in here, it is working. My passwords personally subscribe to Cooper Codes. I don't know about you guys. And we can see that we can still also add the username property as well. And you guys might be like, okay, what gives whatever? Well, this is actually pretty cool for one reason. If we ever do something, like let's just say on accident, instead of actually just setting password over here, we wanted to set pass. Check that out. It's pretty much saying that pass it doesn't exist in the user input type. And so this can make your applications way more cleaner. If you have a state and it's an object and it's only expecting three different types, and I don't know, you say like, you know, here's a good one, password. What if you said that on accident, right? It's going to instantly tell you because in regular JavaScript, what you have to do is you would have to run your code, 
it would try and set pass were and you'd be like, you know, all over the place. It wouldn't be typed and it would let you do that. It would let you have a pass were property on your user input when you want a pass word. And so that's the cool thing about these typed use states is they make your code way cleaner. Not to mention if you're working on a team, it's way easier to work with someone else's state because another really cool thing that I didn't even talk about is check this out. If we go in pretty much anywhere and say user input dot, this user input is typed. So anywhere we can see the password and the username from our typed state. And so this just makes your code way easier to work with. All right, guys, hopefully this video was helpful in understanding typed states and also getting a great understanding of how TypeScript works with React. Thanks so much for watching.